sometimes you're integrating a function which is a product of two functions, one of which you can integrate. You can use integration by parts. The formula is in the formula book. You have to decide which factor is a function you can you'll integrate and which one you'll differentiate. So in this example, you know how to integrate both x and sine x. But you have to think which of them becomes simpler when you differentiate it. x becomes simpler when you differentiate it. Sine x doesn't become any simpler. So u is x and dv by dx is sine x. You can then substitute into the formula that's in your formula book. Take care to tidy up before you do the second integration. You're subtracting a negative. That's the same as adding positive integral of cos x. And now this is an integral which you can find so you can complete the integration. The constant of integration appears when the final integration is complete. Here's another example. You know how to differentiate and how to integrate both these functions. But 3x plus 1 becomes simpler when you differentiate it. So we'll take u as 3x plus 1. These substitute into the formula. And again, tidy up before the next integration. So again, we're subtracting a negative, but notice that a constant factor can come outside the integration. Only constants and only factors, not bits added on. And we have a constant factor, a quarter, and a constant factor, three. So it's tidier to write it like that and then do the final integration. The constant of integration appears when the final integration is done. Sometimes you're asked to tidy it up, and here we have um, a multiple of e to the minus 4x. If you're integrating a trig function which isn't a standard integral, you're going to have to use trig identities. The identities involving cos 2 theta can be used for integrating um, cos squared expressions or, well, any even power of sine x or cos x. Cos squared theta can be written as um, a half of 1 plus cos 2 theta. And in this example, we've got theta is 3x. So by substituting into the identity, we get an expression which we can integrate. If, on the other hand, you've got an odd power of sine x or cos x, you can use one of the identities, cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, to reduce this to the type we had before, a function of a function. I think in an exam, you would be given a hint here. You would be told what identity to use. Cos cubed x can be written as cos squared x times cos x. Now we can use the identity, 1 minus sine squared x equals cos squared x. 1 times cos x is cos x. You know how to integrate that. Sine squared x times, times cos x. Well, here we have a power of a function times the derivative of the function. And so you can use the rule of add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. You can use a substitution to reduce an integral to a simpler type, one that I've already considered. Here, we would let u equal x plus 5. du by dx is 1, so du will equal dx. But when you substitute u equal x plus 5, you're still left with an x. The x hasn't cancelled. 
So you need x in terms of u so that you can get a function that's entirely a function of u. In this case, you can then expand the brackets and each term is something that you can integrate. Remember to put it back in terms of x at the end. Here's a similar example. This time you would let u equal x minus 2. And again, du is dx. But when we substitute, we have an x left. So you have to write x in terms of u. When you expand the brackets, you can then integrate term by term and write it in terms of x at the end.